In our previous video, we looked at the different properties of solids, liquids, and gases. What we're going to be focusing on in this video is the motion of the individual particles in a gas. How do we know how the particles of air, for example, are moving when we cannot actually see them? Now, to answer this question, we need, uh, we need an experiment. This is typically a smoke cell experiment in which uh, we have a little smoke cell, which is just a container which is full of air. Um, in that container, we can then inject a little bit of smoke, so a few smoke particles. By seeing how the smoke particles move will be able to deduce how the air particles themselves are moving due to the collisions that they're making with the smoke cell particles. So let's have a look at this in detail. Okay guys, so let's have a more in-depth look into this experiment. Now over here on the left we've got the experimental setup, we've got a microscope looking down at the smoke cell. Now as we know this is just a little chamber which is filled with air and we've injected some smoke molecules in there, so a little bit of smoke. On the left you've got a lamp, the sole purpose of this lamp is simply to provide a little bit of light to illuminate the area so that we could see it better. Now what I would have drawn here on the right is actually what we would see if we were to look down into the microscope. We would see some smoke particles and uh, they're going to be moving at random speeds, random velocities. For example, this one here is moving at a speed v1, pointing a little bit to the right at a certain angle, this one here at v2, v3, v4, etc, etc. All of these smoke particles are going to be moving completely randomly. Now why are they moving randomly? What's causing them to move randomly? Well, let's imagine the air particles. We cannot actually see them, but I'm just going to uh, draw them for uh, illustration purposes. I'm going to draw them quite small. Now we have a whole bunch of air particles and they're in perpetual motion. They're constantly moving. Those air molecules are constantly flying about. And as they're flying about, they're colliding with the, uh, with the, with the smoke particles. Notice that the random motion of the smoke particles means that the air particles, the air molecules, have to be moving randomly as well. This is an experiment which proves the nature of Brownian motion. Okay, well, let's also um, look at a past paper question because this is a very, very typical past paper question. The first one is to describe the behavior of the smoke particles as observed by a student. Okay, well, the best way that we could describe these is with the word random motion. So, random motion. So, the particles are constantly moving in random motion. Occasionally you may come across the word haphazard as well, which also means random. However, I prefer just using the word random motion. Okay, well, state how the observations led to conclusions about the nature and the properties of the molecules of, um, of a gas. Well, in this case, I've pre-prepared some of the answers, so I'm just going to slide them across here. And we can see that uh, we always have a cause and effect. For example, the movement of the smoke particles is caused by randomly moving air molecules. Additionally, the smoke particles are visible because the, uh, they are considerably bigger than the air molecules. So, hence it says over here, um, air molecules are not visible, hence air molecules must be a lot smaller. Additionally, the smoke particles are moving continuously uh, because the air molecules themselves are continuously moving. Notice that this is a three marker question, so um, we need three statements with a mark for every one of them. Okay guys, so this was the smoke cell experiment. Once again, if there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer those.